Welcome to another episode of Natural Mojo, where I'm bringing you energy and power from the great outdoors. My name is Pamela Sullivan, and I'm known as the Mojo Maker. Now, I have this amazing, well, at least I thought it was an amazing outline for this episode, but you know what? I just threw it all away. And frankly, it's because, you know, I thought I just didn't have the energy within me to keep saying the same things over and over about live your best life and all of that stuff, because... You know, guys, the reality is this. Until you're ready, nothing will ever change. You just keep absorbing more and more and more information and not letting anything out. And and you've seen that. How many times have you put a cup or some bowl under your faucet and turn the water on and just watch everything leak away? And that's what happens when a lot of us who get up and teach all the time, every week after week after week, and keep pouring in, pouring out of ourselves and into you, and it's just flowing away, simply because there's no decision coming from you. Now, I know I take a great risk by speaking to you in this manner, that you might find me a little bit too harsh or abrasive or anything like that. And to be quite honest with you, anybody that takes the time to bring the truth to your attention will always have arrows shot back at them. And I'm no different. I I get that. And I'm willing to take that shot across my bow. But how effective will I be for you if I continually breathe smoke at you and tell you what you want to hear and tell you how wonderful life will be and tell you that it's easy and tell you that all you have to do is sit and 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 say namaste all day and things will be great and and the light is coming and it's all about love and and so forth and you'll never have another problem again in your life i mean i will be irresponsible is what i will be anything worth its salt on this planet requires work and the peeling away of illusions that many people are unwilling to step anywhere near they'd rather keep their illusions and actually even tighten it up even more closely around them than look at them stare into their depths and peel away what doesn't serve peel away the darkness look into their own darkness People don't want to know their darkness, so they distract themselves away from what is uncomfortable. I get it. I was there. I did all kinds of things in my younger days to avoid and run far away from anything that was uncomfortable about myself. I didn't want to see the truth about myself, and the truth about myself is not good, right? So we do all kinds of things to avoid real growth. I don't care how many books you've read or is on your playlist or your um, Kindles or podcast on your Spotify's and so forth. You can do all of that and still refuse to make the move you know you need to make. Like if all I ever said to you or asked you to do was get a whiteboard or a journal and write down this one thing, one question. What is keeping you from making the move that you have to make. Just write it out. What is keeping you from making the move? What are you waiting for? And just leave a blank. What is it that you're waiting for? And really be honest. This is The answer does not have to be anything that you tell anyone or share publicly. And you shouldn't actually, because you will stop yourself from answering honestly. Maybe the answer is it's because you're just too damn lazy and you don't want to admit that you're damn lazy. Maybe it's because fear is eating you up or is it guilt or shame? Or maybe it's because, uh, okay, you know what? Instead of me just throwing things out, let me just properly bring it out in about at least six steps or six reasons why you're not making the move you need to make. Number one, you're waiting for things or circumstances to be ideal. (laughs) Well, you will wait the entirety of your life, and many people do. They just distract themselves away from the fact that they have to do some work, or that they have to move when things are not ideal, or the storm is blaring outside, or they don't have the money, or whatever the deal is. I envy people 
who have ideal situations, but that was never my lot in life. I had to make a move in un in unideal circumstances. I'm not even sure that made sense right there, but it doesn't have to make sense because you know what it is I mean and what I'm talking about. So waiting for ideal situations is not getting you any closer to the life you wish to lead. You know, and here's the thing, my friend. You've seen the movies, you've heard the broadcast and the podcast, and you've read the books, and you've run across people, and you've gone to the courses and the retreats, and you've heard people tell their stories about what they had to do and overcome. Yet for some reason, you think it's going to be different for you. You're waiting for it to somehow be different for you. And maybe by some stroke of luck, you get that wish. But the chances are that ideal situations are just not part of the deal. It's not part of the deal for most people. All the people that you admire in life and have overcome great odds have had to overcome great odds. Great odds meaning they had no money. They were abused sexually and physically and mentally and spiritually and or all of it. Some people had to go through all of those things to overcome and rise up. I had to go through all of those things. Um, I wasn't physical, uh, well, uh, kind of, sort of, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> Either way, there's some major hoops I had to get through to overcome as a human being psychically in order to get myself to move forward and to accept myself. I had to accept myself first. And you see, that's one of the things people are waiting for. They're waiting for to feel better and or look good before they make their move. Well, maybe, you know, waiting until you're a size two is a nice thought and plan, but why don't you get going before you get to size two? And while you're working on your dream, you're working on your health and fitness goals. And telling the story of that journey. All right. We are so busy trying to make our ideal situations happen before we make our move, before we can see into the horizon and distance. And I, I, I have to tell you, I get so worked up. I don't want to get angry or come across as angry. You know how that trope goes. But I get so worked up because I just want to hold on to people and, and shake them and say, come on, wake up, snap out of it like Cher said in Moonstruck, snap out of it because we are under a dream here about what the realities of life really are. They're not easy. They're not terrible and they're not insurmountable, but there are certain things you have to overcome and do and execute before you get into that next place to over, to get over the gap or the chasm. You're here and where you want to go is over there and there's this huge in between that you have to circumvent or circumnavigate. Most people just look at that, say, ah, I'll wait for another day. I'll wait for better times. I'll wait for other circumstances before they make their move. But they never do. What do they do? They Netflix and chill or something like that, right? I mean, I Netflix and chill sometimes. I, maybe I shouldn't even be using that because I know that there's a, <laughs> there's a societal thing attached to that. I just love to watch movies, but I don't, I don't have it trip up my dream. It's something I do to relax after a hard day or a long day of work. It's not my prescription to getting the life I want. Okay. And some people superimpose these things and cover up the mess of their lives or the hardships of their lives. Do you know how many people have been abused? Do you know how many people have gone through hard times? Do you know how many people have been bankrupt? Do you know how many people have been sick? Do you know, I mean, I can go on. Many people have gone through that and continue to go through that. So if that is your state in your life, guess what? You're not alone. There are millions, tens of millions, probably a couple of billion people in that same category as you. You're not special. But a lot of people in most categories have decided to do something about it. You are here to show the, the power of the human spirit. So sitting in your mess, complaining and whining and carrying on does not exemplify the power or glorify the power that you were given. You were given a key to unlock and when you unlock it and you turn around and you tell people what to do or how to do it in like manner or similar manner. All right, it's not to complain and wait for someone to come save you. And that's the problem with a lot of people these days. They've, they've, been, they've learned this terrible habit called learned helplessness. And they become victims. And every day they re-victimize themselves with this thought and the actions that they take 
because of that mindset of learned helplessness. It's the tragedy of our times. We think we're so deserving of every little thing without having to earn it, without having to put out the effort for it. It's not the way it goes, my dear. So if you're one of those people waiting for the road to be smooth or the way to be clear or the clouds to shift over or all the yeses to line up beautifully or for your um, for your cards to give you the green light or for the girl down the road to say you got a clear way to a clear path before you or the cat down the street to to pat you on the back and say here you go you'll be waiting an awful long time I am the mojo maker and my job and my role and my passion is to see that in people and provide the scalpel so they can go do what they were born to do. Until you see the beauty in yourself, until you see the power in yourself, and stop waiting for courage and confidence to come find you, it will never happen for you. Courage and confidence happens when you start to execute your way forward. When you start to take on the path before it's perfect that you're willing to to roll in the mess until it stops being messy. That's when you start feeling that next level beauty. That's when you start saying, yes, I got this. That's when you know, when 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 you embody the knowingness in you to do the thing that you were here to do for yourself first and then for the glorification of other people who will then see you do it and say, yes, me too. I can do that too. So when are you going to stop waiting? When are you going to stop wanting permission from someplace else other than yourself? When are you going to answer the question, what are you waiting for? Or what's stopping you? And be honest about that in a way that serves you. And when you get the answer, you're not going to feel good about it. It might be that you're lazy. It might be that you're just too unconcerned. It might be that you don't want to do anything. It might be that you're scared. It might be that you're rolling around in past shame and blame. It might be a whole lot of things. But until you are willing to face those answers about yourself and start making the move to walk past those things, nothing will ever change for you. All right? And that's really all I wanted to say today is it's short and sweet and to the point. <laughs> like I said, I had another another topic chosen, by, but I thought there was just some housekeeping here that needed to, to come out. You know, as someone that works with people, I'm always sharing and I'm talking and I was just out here and I thought, you know, no, you know what, Pamela, no. You, you need to, to, sh- to clear this up. No use telling people about all the great things that can happen out there if they're not willing to get their hands a little bit dirty and start clearing up their mess and fixing the what's blocking their energy. And because there's so many things that are in your way and you can't see it and you won't see it. So no use keep asking someone to help you. There's no use keep to keep reading those books and showing up for those courses if at least you don't have the intention to take a step forward. Okay, I will work with anybody who is at least willing to do that. So this week as you move forward into your days and into the promises that you've made to yourself, start again with a new light, a new step, a new intention, a new position of power that every day you renew your vow to you forget about what next week is going to look like it's about what today and then tomorrow and the next day after that is going to look like just keep showing up that's all I ask be truthful to yourself and only to yourself and off you go this is Pamela Silver the Mojo Maker and I invite you to visit my website at PamelaSilver.com for more information I have a, a, a download on my front page that I think will be a great start for you. It is, I call it the bullshit guide, and it's all the bullshit that we tell ourselves about ourselves to keep ourselves blind in the dark. Start there at PamelaSilver.com. Have a wonderful week.